As always, if you haven't attempted the question on your own, please pause the video and do so now before listening on. Now, since this question is asking us to calculate the radius of a charged particle that's moving through the magnetic field, most of us would think of the following equation, as it is one of the key equations presented in the chapter. So, of course, we have the mass of the particle, we have the velocity of the particle, we have the charge, and then the magnetic field. Most of these quantities are directly stated in the question. The mass, for example, is given right here. We have the magnetic field. The charge is even known. It says it's a singly charged ion. Well, that means that the charge is that standard value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So those are straightforward. Where it gets a little challenging is the velocity of the particle. We do not know that right now. And so to figure out what that velocity is, we can consider the following free body diagram. Now here we have the positive charge at the center of our free body diagram. If we consider the figure, we notice that there are two plates on either side of that positive charge. There is a positive plate and a negative plate. Think about the direction in which the positive charge would be pushed if it were situated between a positive and a negative plate. Of course, the positive plate will push the charge to the right, and the negative plate will attract the positive charge also to the right. So overall, there is a rightward force pushing on the positive charge, and we've labeled that the electric force. That's a force that we were introduced to in earlier chapters. Now, because there is a magnetic field present, which is represented by these x's, there's also going to be a magnetic force acting on the positive charge. Now, it might not be obvious that the magnetic force is pushing to the left. In fact, in order to see that, we would have to apply right-hand rule one, which we will review very briefly here. So using our right hand, we would point our thumb in the direction of the velocity, which in the figure is directed upward. Our four fingers would be pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, which is into the page. So we've tried our best to show a little bit of an angled perspective view of the hand, and hopefully it looks like the fingers are projecting into the page. And then our palm would be pointing in the direction of the force. And so if we aligned our hand in the following manner, we should see that our palm is pointing to the left. That would be the direction of the magnetic force acting on the charged particle. Now, presumably, as the charged particle moves through this chamber, it is not accelerating. And so what that means is that the magnitude of the magnetic force and the electric force would be equal. So we're going to set them equal to each other. We can then substitute in their respective expressions. Notice that in this particular case, the angle is going to be 90 degrees because that is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. And if you look at the diagram, Hopefully we can see that since the velocity is moving straight up and the magnetic field is straight into the page, that the angle between them would indeed be 90 degrees. But the sign of 90 is just 1, so we can cancel it out of the equation. Notice also that charge appears on both sides of the equation, so it can be divided out. And then we can solve for the velocity of the particle by dividing both sides of this equation by b, the magnetic field. So we have solved for an expression for the velocity that we can use in the radius formula presented earlier. So let's bring that formula back into the picture. So we'll take that expression for velocity and we'll plug it in right into the radius formula. There's a little algebraic trick we could then use to simplify this. If you have a fraction divided by another quantity, you can take the denominator of your fraction and sort of push it down to the denominator and then they end up getting multiplied. So in this case it would become a over b times c. Same idea here, we can take this b right here and just push it down to the denominator. We'll end up with b times b which will actually make b squared. And so now we're ready to just plug in the known values. We have the mass, the charge, the magnetic field as stated earlier. E is the electric field strength and that was stated as well as being 950 volts per meter. So here we have all the known values plugged in, and when we compute that, we should get approximately 1.50 times 10 to the minus 4 meters, and that would indeed be the correct answer. If we wanted to express it in millimeters, you could multiply that quantity by 10 to the positive 3, and you would end up with roughly 0 0.150 millimeters. Either answer would be correct. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You are also welcome to send your own question to the email address listed on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.